please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Ten thousand six hundred and eight thereabout is the first equilibrium on the Nifty and on the Bank Nifty somewhere around twenty five thousand six hundred. Punjab National Bank has said uh, that the fraud that they had already disclosed on the fourteenth Feb could go up by an additional two hundred and four million dollars, which is roughly thirteen hundred and twenty crore rupees. India has need for more bigger financial institutions that can underpin its continuing economic growth. So right. it's a story we like, and in some ways, this merger is our reinvestment in that story. The market's at about ten thousand five sixty three, which means we're about twenty points off the lows. Bank Nifty is going home with three hundred point loss. The Nifty was spared the blushes because of uh, Reliance and also Infosys. So these two stocks really contributed a lot uh, on the way up. Uh, uh, the mid cap index, of course, was down about one percent. Markets end slightly lower after two sessions of gains. The Sensex ends 100 points in the red. Financials drag the Nifty, while energy and IT stocks keep losses in check. More skeletons tumble out of the PNB closet. The public sector bank reveals a further 1,300 crores of unauthorized transactions in a notice to the exchanges. Stock tumbles 13%. ACC and Ambuja Cement take a hit in trade after ACC shelves its merger plan with Ambuja for now. Uh, it cited uh, constraints in implementation of the merger as the cause. Indra Prastha Gas and Mahanagar Gas gain in trade today after the Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board says they will auction 86 areas for city gas networks by March. Banks give a nod to the Aon JSW Steel Consortium to take over Monet Ispath with a 76% haircut. This marks the first successful resolution under RBI's defaulters list. Binani Cement uh, lenders also set to meet uh, today to finalize the resolution for the company. Those were the top five market headlines from the day's trading action. Hello and welcome to a fresh new edition of Markets Today Talk Back, the show where we tell you about uh, eight hours of markets in essentially five stories. I'm Prashant Nair. With me is my colleague Ekta Batra. Hi, Ekta. Hi, Prashant. Thanks very much for that. Well, over the next 30 minutes, we will be discussing those top five headlines. And our experts will answer all of your stock queries as well. So joining us this evening to answer all of those queries is market expert Prakash Tiwan and technical expert Mitesh Thakkar. Thanks, uh, gentlemen, for joining in this evening. Before we come to you and start discussing the markets, um, Prashant, what's your sense? Uh, it turned out to be quite a tough day with the bank nifty especially. Yeah, I mean, PNB, I think we can uh, point to PNB, blame uh, it for essentially, uh, you know, fresh revelations about uh, the entire uh, issue. Uh, so the hole seems to be bigger. Uh, many suspected it, but now, of course, we have it from PNB itself. But, you know, let's just start right at the beginning. Uh, you know, we, had, we were coming off uh, after about 250 odd points, a straight move over the last, what, uh, three trading sessions. When I say three, I mean from last Thursday's lows. The Nifty was up about 250 odd points. Uh, so, you know, even with the support that we got from Wall Street, it wasn't really clear right in the beginning uh, that the market would keep going the way it had over the last two days in particular. Uh, and, then, and then to boot, Asian indices, just look at what Asia closed like. Uh, you know, early on, before we started trading, most of Asia was actually higher. By close, most Asian indices were off the highs and actually closed in the negative territory. So that support from Asia wasn't really there. And then, of course, there were local, uh, local banking issues which weighed. Uh, of course, I'm referring to PNB and the additional hit they might have to take. And the Nifty PSU Bank Index sold off 3.5% just today. PNB uh, went down to single digits, big cut. And other PSU banks also, in a way, paid the price collateral damage. Market breadth was weak. Uh, and I think that is uh, largely as a result of mid caps and small caps, which were under pressure. But I think, you know, when you analyze the day's trading uh, action, you have to remember that the 250 odd points that you kind of had already done. Uh, and then you had uh, some negative news flow to boot as well. But let's talk about stocks individually. What happened? Ekta. Yes, absolutely. Well, I think uh, PNB was top of mind today. So PNB was one of the top losers in terms of the broader market stocks. We had, however, a lot of uh, impact come in on the other bigger PSU banks as well as private banks. So State Bank of India was lower. We had ICICI Bank, which was down a percent and a half from the broader markets, BOI, IDBI Bank, Indian Bank. All of them felt the ripples today. So all of them lost anywhere between 3 to 7 odd percent. From the broader markets, high beta also declined. 
So Reliance Communication, Reliance Naval and Engineering, Oberoi Royalty, Jet, all of these stocks were down and out today. However, there were a couple of stocks which managed to gain. So for example, Simha Oli Sugar had a comeback today after all of the negative news yesterday with OBC. So that stock uh, was up around 9 to 10 odd percent. We had Graphite India where there was a positive brokerage report. That one was up 5 percent. Petnet LNG was up around 2.6 percent. Other stocks from the Nifty space which gained included Ambuja which was, uh, sorry, Ambuja, which actually declined around 4.4% after that merger has been put on hold. And then we had stocks such as Dr. Reddy's and Infosys, which managed to buck the trend. So that's basically what happened in the markets. But let's get in a quick view uh, on the technicals also. Uh, Mitesh, over to you. Uh, first to you, actually, what did you make of today's trade and how would you go in tomorrow? What's your sense? Yeah. So, um, really, th I think uh, very clearly, you know, we kind of met uh, an important technical mark around the 10,630 level. Uh, if you recall a couple of weeks back when the market was declining, I think all the pullbacks uh, kind of ended around this 10,630 uh, level on the Nifty. And after two days of rally and today's gap up opening, I think it was very logical that uh, long positions, you know, people holding long positions will want to book it around these levels. And even if somebody wants to sell in, I think these were the better levels to sell in. So, I think some kind of supply is coming. The important thing is that yesterday's gap up, which is, uh, you know, uh, recorded, I think if that holds, which is at around 10,500 on the Nifty, then I think we are pretty much safe. And uh, then I think, you know, after a couple of days of consolidation between 10,500 to about 10,630, the index might resume its up move and head towards 10,700 plus levels. If the gap goes and uh, the, the corresponding level in the bank Nifty is about 25,300, if these levels are being broken, then I think we'll possibly get into some kind of a declining mode again. Uh, Prakash, just a word from you on uh, broader markets uh, as well, I mean, uh, in terms of where we are now. So, I think, Prashant, very clearly, uh, the market is continuing to be getting deeper and deeper into that stock-specific zone. Uh, there's nothing that's kind of, you know, working across the board. So, you, you have the sector rotation that's so prominent amongst the larger ones, uh, the nifty stocks particularly. But if you see, uh, you know, any positive news flow is also kind of getting rewarded uh, amply enough. So, you had Managa gas that Ekta just alluded to. Uh, a, a very strong move and the stock has lost 30% from its uh, earlier high and it's kind of making a significant comeback. You look at a small company like Sri Pushkar Chemicals, 15% up, positive news flow. You know, so th that's that's what uh, people are looking at. So my sense is the market will continue to give us very good opportunities to accumulate these stock-specific stories, uh, while the broader markets could continue to be fairly volatile and confusing given the kind of global uh, news flow that's that's uh, hitting us. But uh, there's no positive or negative trigger domestically that could upset this uh, up move. And I agree with Mitesh, I wouldn't be surprised if we actually were to see 10,700 also uh, happen on the Nifty very soon. Okay, uh, so that basically sets us up in terms of overall top-down market view. Let's uh, move on to the second story, the top headline, second uh, headline of the day. Uh, more skeletons essentially have tumbled out of Punjab National Bank's closet. The public sector bank revealed another 1,300 crore rupees of unauthorized transactions. This is in addition to the 11,400 crore rupee fraud, which was reported earlier on the 14th of February. Uh, the stock, of course, was down 12% uh, in trade by close. Uh, it dragged the banking index along with it. Other public sector banks essentially shed a lot of blood. Uh, the, uh, you know, index, the bank index uh, was down a, a full 1% or so. The, as I said earlier, the PSU bank index was down 3.5%. Ritu is now joining in with essentially details on PNB, the new revelations and where things stand. Ritu, over to you. It does appear that the fraud may be bigger than the 11,400 crore rupee figure that everyone's been working with. In a late night release to exchanges, Punjab National Bank clarified there could be additional unauthorized transactions to the tune of $204 million, which is roughly uh, 1,323 crore rupees at the current exchange rates, which means now that the total value of the scam one will be over 11,400 crore rupees and at 12,700 crore rupees. So what does this mean? Number one, of course, is the direct fallout is the liability on other other banks which have discounted bills against these fraudulently issued LOUs and FLCs. We don't know whether more banks are involved or, or the same banks have more exposure now uh, because of the additional frauds that have been discovered. So far, we know that State Bank of India, Bank of India, Canara Bank, Axis Bank, Union Bank, Yuko as well as, as, well as uh, Allahabad Bank are the ones that have discounted against these LOUs and FLCs. More details, of course, are awaited on the same. Uh, now, the additional amount of fraud that has been discovered is 1323 crore rupees, which is almost equal to 
uh, to the entire FY17 profit for uh, Punjab National Bank uh, and almost 50% of the total uh, market cap of the bank if you look at the 12,700 crore figure of total fraud. So it is a significant account, uh, amount which is why we've seen the stock fall significantly. The NB has erased almost 15,000 crores in market cap since it disclosed this default. But the biggest question that remains is, is this additional 1,300 crore rupees the end of this mega fraud that we're talking about? Or are there more skeletons that may tumble out of the closet? Okay, absolutely, Ritu. Thanks very much for that. Well, uh, we have a query now. Kamlesh Patel is calling us from Gujarat with a question on PNB. Uh, hi, Kamlesh. Uh, hi, madam. Your question on PNB? My question is, I have bought 10,000 quantity at uh, 149 rupees. Se. So, I am a short-term investor. So, I am going to sell or hold, karu, madam. Okay, short-term investor. Uh, Mitesh, what would you recommend? Because we had another query earlier in the day, you know, similar to this, uh, where a retired person had bought PNB but was now sitting on a loss and actually bought it right before this, the fraud news broke out. So, what would you recommend uh, uh, to our caller as well as to people who are stuck in PNB at current levels? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, the stock was, I was looking at actually this decline kind of getting arrested uh, uh, around these levels of. Um, uh, 110 to about 105 that's been broken the next support is slightly uh, off these levels i think around 75 to about 70 is the next support zone so in that sense i think there could be some more pain left in the stock price uh, i think you know you would see if you look at the multi-year chart starting from 2005 on multiple occasions you would see the stock bottom out around the 65 70 zone so but that still means that the stock could possibly lose another 25 percent in the value before we see some kind of a reversal happening out there so my sense is that I think, you know, if, if the horizon is short term, then I think possibly the person can exit because I think even at lower levels, you will need to see some base building before the stock reverses eventually. But if you can hold for some medium term, which is basically about few more months, try to average it around 75, 70 zone, keep a stop below 65 on your fresh quantity, get your average price down and on the bounce back, try to exit around 110 levels. We have uh, Kanan P, who is 200 shares of RBL Bank, uh, purchased at 525 rupees. I mean, RBL for a long time was holding the 500 rupee marks, but in this correction came down to about 470. It's come back a little bit. He's a medium term investor, Kanan, and he's been holding the stock for the last six months now. He wants to know if he should hold or continue to hold or sell 200 shares at 525. Uh, Prakash, why don't you take this one? So I think uh, very clearly uh, this is one of those uh, new age uh, old fashioned banks uh, and, and uh, it continues to have a very robust franchise within the uh, semi-urban and rural segments. Uh, and unlike what we believe, you know, it has actually grown itself quite well on the retail side as well after the rebranding and, you know, which has probably coincided with the public issue. Uh, my sense is this is one bank that will start looking at growing inorganically very rapidly. I mean, it's made some attempts even in the past uh, to, to acquire, you know, uh, uh, the MFI business of one of the largest names. It's also talking to, uh, you know, Canfin Homes. It's made a bid for that. So I think very clearly it's a bank that knows what it needs to do to grow and scale up. Uh, very well managed, you know, it's a pedigreed bank. Uh, the people who run the business also have a lot of skin in the game uh, through the ESOPs that they own. So my sense is this is one bank in this uh, entire mayhem that you see in the sector as a whole where you could probably be you know rewarded if you were to wait but you'll have to give it at least about 12 months to uh, make it to that 630 650 zone uh, which is which is another uh, 20 22 percent from here and and that could probably be you know a phase of consolidation beyond which it will become much more robust and revalued uh, richly so you'll have to give it uh, some time but otherwise definitely it's a hold or add on dips okay all right, so that's the view coming in on banks. But let's focus on our third headline this evening. ACC and Ambuja Cement took a hit in trade today. This is after ACC has shelved merger plans with Ambuja over constraints in implementing the merger. Although they clarified uh, that, in fact, the merger is the ultimate objective. Nigel is here to give us more details on this story. Nigel. Well, that's right. The ACC Ambucha that was long awaited, that's off the table at least for now. Both the managements have clarified that there are various constraints and that's why they can't go ahead. But the long-term objective is to merge both these two companies. Now, the current arrangement that they're working with is sharing of some raw materials, some services as well. And they are viewing various synergy benefits going ahead 
as well. In addition to that, they'll have to take shareholders' approval as well. And that's where we'll actually know what they can lay out in terms of synergy benefits. But just dating back to 2013, the global parent had done a bit of a restructuring between both these two companies. And at that point of time, they said synergy benefits could flow through to the tune of around 900 crores or thereabouts. Then in May 2017, they announced that merger and the street seemed to have liked it quite a bit because both the two stocks rallied. Brokerages were talking about margin accretion to the tune of around 250 to around 300 basis points. But let's put the numbers down. In 2013, they gave us a number synergy benefits of around 900 crores. But from this number, you'll have to deduct nearly around 150 crores. That's because of use of limestone from ACC's uh, plants and that would entail a higher royalty. That works out with nearly around 64 rupees on a per ton basis. So all in all, it'll be nearly around 140 to around 160 crores on a per annum basis. They'll also have a one-time transition cost of uh, close to around 500 crores or thereabouts. That will be on, uh, on stamp duty as well. So net-net, the 900 crores appears like a bit of an inflated uh, number. What are the brokerages saying? Credit Suisse. They're saying now the synergy benefits are delayed. It's a bit of a sentiment negative, and that's why they have an underweight as well as a neutral rating on both those two stocks. Deutsche Bank, they're saying if they have to choose the two, then they'll have to choose ACC over Ambuja Cements because ACC valuation-wise is cheaper. And in fact, CLSA, they're saying, you know, this movement of clinker as well as cement, the current arrangement, that's good enough for them. And that's why they maintain their buy rating on both the two stocks. Ajil, thanks very much uh, for that comprehensive, exhaustive uh, summary of what has happened. What was supposed to happen has not happened. Uh, we have a question. M. Lakshman has a question on ACC. It's a very specific one. He wants to put in 75,000 rupees in ACC uh, and uh, he wants to do it for the long term. He wants to know whether this is the right time, uh, essentially, to do this. Uh, Prakash, ACC is uh, corrected about 13-14% from its all-time high. Uh, right time uh, to buy into it? Given the kind of... Uh you know, negative sentiment that uh, prevails around this ACC uh, uh, Muja twins. Uh, you know, the actual beneficiary of this uh, uh, situation where both of them are blinking is going to be for Ultratech. And uh, if, if he were to look at a largish cement play and invest for the long term and it isn't willing to take the volatility risk of, let's say, a Sagar cement or a smaller, you know, player, uh, he will have to stick to the large uh, guys. And Ultratech is definitely far better than ACC or even Ambuja for that matter in terms of efficiency and scale. So I'm very positive on that. And that's also corrected a bit. It's giving you a good entry point. So look at that uh, slightly more positively. And that, that could be probably the default choice. Okay, all right, Prakash. Uh, well, we have to take a break now, but we leave you with some market opinion from Andrew Holland, who believes that global volatility poses a risk to Indian markets. Listen in to that and we'll be back. Markets, you know, if, if they can breach that kind of 10,650, um, you know, probably have a, you know, more momentum. Um, but, you know, what the risk is, as, as we've seen, is if global markets, uh, you know, kind of uh, head downwards again because of fears of, of, of rising inflation. So I don't think we're out of the woods, but we're in a better place than we were maybe two, three weeks ago. Welcome back. Well, straight to the fourth headline of the day now. City gas distribution stocks were in the green today after the Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board authorized auction of 86 areas for city gas networks by March 2018. Both uh, Indraprastha Gas as well as Mahanagar Gas were up over, uh, around 2% in today's trade. Well, we have a caller now. Mukesh Prasad is calling in with a question on Mahanagar Gas. Uh, okay, it is an SMS, I understand. Uh, where he has 100 shares which are bought at 970 and uh, uh, let's get both a long term as well as a short term view. Prakash, first over to you, uh, what would you recommend? I think uh, two, two advantages that I see for this uh, gentleman. One is that he's entered at a very decent uh, price point. So he really stands to, uh, you know, be very, very uh, safe of sorts in terms of this volatility. The other thing is uh, the stock after having lost about 30% uh, uh, from its all-time high or recent high 
52 week high it's it's kind of started getting back into a, some sort of a, a reckoning and and there is some very serious buying into this stock uh, remember this is one uh, stock which is virtually a monopoly in its defined geography and any new development that it does for the newer areas newer geographies that it gets awarded will probably be at the least capex possible because they have built in enough uh, to to sustain and to uh, service a wider you know range of uh, uh, customers so that's that's the beauty about the way you know everything's done they they can scale up very rapidly there's no time cost attached to this so once uh, that is clear by end of march you know and and the numbers in september could probably start capturing all that salience you'll probably see the stock at closer to 1500 1450 1500 zone which is a decent 40 45% upside from here so stay put uh, enjoy that it it has enough gas to go to those uh, newer levels that uh, could be rewarding enough uh, and mitesh yeah so i think uh, mgl and igl both look good to me mgl in fact appears to have completed a good correction and could get into an uptrend again i would look at targets of around 1150 to about 1170 over the next uh, uh, 2 to 2 and a half months and if we cross at even higher levels of 1250 could be tested Fair enough. Uh, so that is MGL and IGL. Let's move on to the fifth and the final headline of the day. The banks have uh, given a nod to the Aon JSW Steel Consortium to take over Mone Ispath with a 76% haircut, marking the first successful resolution for companies under RBI's two defaulter lists. Binani Cement Lenders are also going to meet today to finalize the resolution for the company. Uh, we've got a question coming in. Uh, and this is on Binani Industries, not cement is not listed. Binani Industries says, which is the parent. Harshad uh, has a question on the company. He's a medium-term investor and wants to know if it is the right time to buy the stock. Prakash, this is coming your way. Binani Industries. You know, so uh, very peculiarly, I, before I comment on Binani specifically, Prashant, my my concern is with these NCLT cases. You know, they become such binary trades because. Uh, even now when when we talk about when we hear about the JSW bid for monet you know the the significant dilution that's happening on the equity side uh, since the numbers are out we can talk about this in more detail so it's almost like 88% dilution of uh, what you know the public shareholding is and what the promoters hold today because in turn even the lenders are uh, basically getting to exchange to to change hands of their ownership to the new uh, consortium that would almost own 74 75% now when that happens you really don't know what's the residual value of the business that's going to be attributed to per on a per share basis and that that's my worry while this is a great resolution process it will it will definitely throw up uh, more positives than negatives for a for an investor to buy into this just to expect some great value unlocking i think i i have my doubts on that so it's good for the acquirer but not necessarily for the residual minority shareholder so stay out of it if you are a small investor there are many more opportunities that are available every day we keep on talking about stock picking being so so evidently you know rewarding at this point in time why should you be stuck with nclt which could actually take away all the money that you put in or probably reward it with a 2x kind of a return in some time so that's 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 what uh, i meant when i said it's a binary trade stay out of binani stay out of money these are not businesses that you need to buy as minority shareholders okay all right fair enough prakash as well as rajat thanks uh, very much for nitesh rather uh, this evening um, well with that it's a wrap on uh, this edition of markets today talk back thanks very much for watching and have a good evening